Hi, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to use contact as a multi-output instrument in Logic Pro. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new instrument track. I'm going to select contact. I'm going to make sure that I choose the multi-output 16 stereo. At the same time, I'm going to tell Logic that I want to create a multi-timbral parts and I'm going to choose, in this case, six multi-timbral parts. Usually, if you plan to use more, you should put 16 so you can take advantage of the full 16 instruments inside an instance of contact. When I tap Create, a new instance of contact is going to be created right here. And as you can see, Logic added my six tracks on which I can record MIDI. If you look closer, each track sends on a different MIDI channel. Channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Your output section might change depending on how you set it up previously. In most cases, if you haven't used contact before, your output section is going to look like this. We're going to use this as a starting point, so then I'm going to show you how to change it, because it's not the ideal situation for multi-output. Contact is a multi-timbral software synthesizer, which means I can insert up to 16 different parts, 16 different instruments, in one single instance of contact. The first thing to do now is to add instruments inside my instance of contact. Let's say I want to recreate a traditional rhythm section. So I'm going to start with the drums. As you can see automatically, the first instrument has been assigned to MIDI channel A1, which really means MIDI channel 1. Technically, contact can handle more than 16 MIDI channels, up to 64, but when it's hosted in Logic, we can use 16 at the time. Now I'm going to load a piano sound. And as you can see, by scrolling down, automatically, my piano sound has been assigned to MIDI channel number 2. Now, let's load a bass. And again, by scrolling down, I can see it was assigned automatically to channel 3. And maybe let's add a guitar. Once I have all my four instruments ready, it's not a bad idea to save this as a multi. A multi is a combination of all my instruments inside an instance of contact. So to save the multi, I can simply go up here to the floppy disk icon and select Save Multi As. And I'm going to say rhythm section and now this has been saved as a multi which means if I need to reload this exact configuration I can simply load a multi rather than reloading each individual instrument. Now the MIDI assignment channel is all done for me so if I go here back in Logic and I record enable the first MIDI track I'm gonna direct my MIDI information to channel 1 of this contact instance. If I switch to channel 2, I'm going to send it to channel 2, which is my piano. Channel 3 is going to direct my data to the bass, and channel 4 to my jazz guitar. If I'm happy with this setup, I'm pretty in a good shape because I can now start sequencing my tracks and all the MIDI assignment is done for me. Uh, I should rename the tracks, drums, piano, bass, and guitar. One of the drawbacks of this technique though is that if I want to change the volume 
of one of the parts. I cannot do it from here. If I move one volume, they all move. And this is because if I open up my mixing board, I can see that I really have just one output coming out from my contact instance. And this output really controls the output of all the MIDI instrument. See, I'm moving the fader down here, and this fader moves them all because they're all routed to the same audio output. Now to fix this, we can use the multi-output option from contact to send each instrument to a different output that's going to send the signal to a different AUGS in the Logic mixing board. Let's learn how to do it. If you remember, when we created the contact instance, we created a multi-output, 16 stereo output version. And this is where we can actually address and send each instrument to a different output. Now, unfortunately, the default output setup in contact is not ideal for what we want to do. If you don't see the output view here, just make sure to go up here and have the outputs option selected. At the moment, I have one stereo output called stereo one, a second stereo output called stereo two, and then I have a surround option. Now, in most cases, you're not gonna need a surround option. So the first thing that we want to do is to delete this surround output. So I'm just gonna select it and I'm going to tap the minus sign here, and that output is gone. Now remember that every time you change any of the output configuration, you should restart Logic, because Logic needs to re-register all the outputs assignments that Contact has set up. So I'm going to do that. Remember, you have to do this only when you change your output configuration. So at the moment, as you can see, I reopened my session and I have now my two stereo output. But I really have four instruments here, so I would like to have a stereo output for each instrument. A quick fix for this situation is to go here in the small drop-down menu inside the output section of contact and select one of the batch function. And one of the really useful options here is clear out section and create individual channel for each loaded instrument. By selecting that option, I have now four set of stereo output, each assigned to each instrument. So I have four sets, and the name of each output actually has the name of the instrument. So this is a quick way to just assign every instrument to an individual output. If you want to create more output at this point, it's very simple. I'm going to simply tap the plus sign next to outputs. I select how many I want to create. Let's say I want to create two more. Each output is going to have two channels because it's stereo. And I'm going to click OK. Now I have two new output. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now notice how down here you can see the, the bus connection to logic. And for the first four, I'm fine. I have bus one and two, which is really the main output, three and four, five, six, seven, and eight. But the next one were added at the end of my bus system and it's not this is not ideal so I can reassign those by simply tapping down here I'm going to select from the top 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 if I tap OK now this is sequential 7 and 8 9 and 10 and for this one I will have to choose 11 and 12 so I'm going to do the same tap there Eleven and twelve. So again, if you are in a hurry and you're a little bit confused, the best option is to just go to the batch function and select clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. 
but if you want to create your own configuration you can just add channels and then just make sure that they are reassigned to the correct bus that sends this output to logic if you are happy with your configuration i highly recommend saving your preset so you can go to save output section preset as and let's just name that configuration. I highly recommend doing so because it really speeds up the process when loading different configurations. In general, what I usually have is actually 16 stereo output all set up for me. And that's my default. If you have a default configuration that you want to load every time, again, go to presets and select save current output section state as default for all formats. That means every time you start a new instance of contact you will have that set up for the output. So I know it's a little bit complicated this part but again if you are in doubt just go to batch function clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument and you are all set. So once I'm done with the assignment here I need to double check that each instrument is assigned to its own output. And I can go right here and I can see that the output for the drums is assigned to this output which corresponds to the name of the drums for the piano is assigned to this output for the bass is assigned to this output and for the guitar is assigned to this output if I was gonna put another instrument let's say a synthesizer at the moment, the synthesizer is output to output 1 and 2. But if I tap there, I can assign it to my stereo 5. And so now the synthesizer will come out here. This is how you reassign the output of each instrument. Now that I'm done here, I need to go to my mixing board. And remember, at the moment, from contact I, I'm only seeing this output which really corresponds to stereo output 1 and 2. So what I need to do is to create extra AUX tracks in the mixing board that receive from different buses assigned to each of these outputs. And that's very easy to do. I simply tap on the plus here right at the bottom of my contact instance channel and that will create an extra AUGS that you can see is receiving from bus 3 and 4 from contact. And this 3 and 4 really is this 3 and 4. And if I keep tapping on the plus, I'm adding extra AUGS tracks that receive from different buses. So my 3 and 4 is going to go here. My 5 and 6 is going to go here. My 7 and 8 is going to go here. And my 9 and 10 is going to go here. Which means now that if I play the drum kit is going to come out from 1 and 2. But if I play the piano instrument it's going to come out from 3 and 4. Right? I can see here. From here it goes here and it goes here. The bass will be going to 5 and 6. Output 5 and 6 from contact to bus 5 and 6 in logic and so on. So it's a good idea now to rename those AUX tracks. So this would be my piano out. This would be my, my bass out. Guitar out. Now this one I can rename it drums just remember that this is the main output from contact, so it's the main one and two. So at this point I can have different volumes for different instruments from contact and I can also use my inserts and sends to apply different effects. So I basically created a fully functioning multi-instrument, multi-output instrument using contact and logic. It is important to notice that if you want to do any type of automation on these channels, as you can see, they are not showing up in my tracklist view. And so I could do automation in real time here 
by just turning on my automation with touch, latch, or write, and moving the faders and the parameters in real time. But if I want to draw automation with the pencil, I need to have this aux channel show up in my track list view. Because remember, these host the MIDI, but this host the audio. So to do so is fairly simple. To have these aux channels show up in my track list view, I'm going to just select them. And if I go to Option, I'm going to select Create Tracks for Selected Channel Strips or press Ctrl T. As you can see, my piano out, bass out, and guitar out have been added right here on my track list view. I can move them at the bottom so it's easier to um, understand what they are. And if you notice, if I just move one of the faders down here, I can see my piano out being moved up here because it's the same track. Which means if I press A, I can start drawing automation for that channel. To be careful not to draw automation for this channel because this controls really all my output 1 and 2. So you have to be a little bit careful um, in recognizing what is what and that's where it gets a little bit confusing. But now I have control over my piano output. So if I'm sending notes on the piano track, I'm controlling the piano volume right here. If I'm on my bass track, this control the bass, my guitar. If I'm on my drums, this controls the drum volume. And again, it's a little bit confusing because I can see all these instruments volume going up and down. But again, I'm not affecting the piano, the bass, and the guitar out because they're on different aux tracks. I know that this can be a little bit confusing, but you know, just practice a little bit this by using a contact instruments with multi instruments loaded and assigned to different outputs, and you will master it in no time.